What's happening there, golfing fans? Welcome back to the channel. Brought to you in association again with betting.co.uk. I'm Ginger Joe and I'm back with my weekly golf selections for you to take a look at. And in this episode alone, we've got two events to turn our attentions to. On the DP World Tour, we've got the Scottish Open at the Renaissance Club. And on the PJ Tour, we've got the Barbasol Championship at Keen Trace Golf Club. Two pretty solid events to turn our attentions to. And I've actually got four selections in each of those. Now this week, uh, rather than the each way singles, I'm just advising the win singles and then of course the each way cross doubles as well, bar one of my selections which I will point out as we go through the episode. If you're new to my channel, please do hit that subscribe button, it helps me out a great deal and by doing so you get to come over and join the group chat as well. Um, this is only going to be open until Wednesday on 9pm so I advise you coming to get stuck into the group chat as soon as you can because I do have some changes coming to the channel in the very near future. Now, a little bit of a background towards myself. I'm an ex-tour professional, so I've got some playing experience myself. And I'm now putting that knowledge to good use to try and find you the players that I think are best suited to the courses that I would have taken a look at each week. Now, we did have a pretty decent week last week as well. We had Cam Smith land the Live Golf London at 9-1. to one. On the PGA Tour, we had Mark Hubbard in the places at 40-1 to one on the PGA Tour. And then on the DP World Tour, Marcel Seen placed for us at 50 to 1, but he did finish in a tie for 10th with seven other players. So that uh, profit was reduced quite significantly due to the place numbers there. But it was still a pretty decent week nonetheless. But hopefully we can get back into the winner's enclosure this week with two nice cross doubles. Now, uh, before I go on to my selections, provided by betting.co.uk, I have been given an offer from William Hill, where if you bet £10, you'll get £30 of free bets using the link in the description below. And with me going for the win singles this week, I have been a little bit more greedy, chasing some profit and some prices. So the prices that you'll see in this episode are all reflective of William Hill. You're getting eight places on the Scottish Open, then on the PGA Tour, you're getting six places from them as well. But as I said, this is for the win singles and the each way cross doubles. Now, uh, having a pretty good time of things this year with 801 points in profit to the level stakes. And hopefully we can add a little bit more to that as we head in towards the British Open next week. Now, I'm going to go straight on to the selection. Starting off on the DP World Tour, we've got the Scottish Open. This is going to be a really good event. We've got a lot of the big guns coming over from the PJ Tour, getting a prep round in for the British Open next week. And it's going to be a really tough event as well. Very windy. A lot of rain is due as well over the four days. And this is at the Renaissance Club. 7,237 yards, three par fives, par 70. And this is going to be plenty difficult for an event. You're going to need a really well-established player to get the job done, I think, in particular for this week. My number one selection is going to be world number 10, Jordan Spieth at 22 to 1, 13 time PJ Tour winner. And he definitely seems a bit of a rejuvenated character this season as well. I think he's a perfect uh, fit for this track and he's actually become sneakily long off the team. He's become much more accurate with his driver as well. That is definitely going to help him this week, providing his uh, class short game is on point two. I think that he's going to come here ready to go and could be really quick out of the gates as well. A lot of players are going to use this Lynx track as a bit of a prep for next week, but Jordan's got a death touch already and he seems to excel on Lynx golf courses when he does come over to this side of the water. He's having a really good year so far. He's got some strong results and I think he's going to have a really big chance at 22 to 1. Selection number two is going to be Tommy Fleetwood at 20 to 1. World number 22, yet to win this year, but he's been on my radar a little bit of time now throughout this season. And he was quite unlucky not to win in the Canadian Open. He went down to a 72 foot putt from Nick Taylor in the playoff. So it was almost out of his hands, which wasn't necessarily his fault that he didn't get the job done. But my followers weren't, wouldn't be too worried about that as the four selections I put up that week did actually fill the first four spaces. He's slowly coming to the boil. He's been playing good around the time of the majors. Got some really good finishes this year. And I think this week could be a really big week for Tommy. I could see him going really close this week, getting a lot of momentum for next week and maybe not doing so well next week. But for this week in particular, I think Tommy Fleetwood would be a really good shot. You need a good ball striker. Tommy Fleetwood is definitely that. And he's going to get plenty of chances throughout this week from him. So Tommy Fleetwood at 20 to 1 is selection number 2. Selection number three is going to be Shane Lowry at 30 to 1. Obviously, well suited to Lynx Golf for this short game. I just think 30 to 1 is really good value about his chances. His short game is definitely going to be a bonus around these sort of courses. And it's hard to see where Shane Lowry doesn't play well this week. He's really good off the tee. And he's had some really good finishes this year as well. He finished 12th in the PJ. It looked like he was coming good at the Travelers a couple of weeks ago as well. He finished 14 under despite the track probably not going to be likely suited to his game. But he's really started to come and play well. And this season alone, 
alone, he's finished top 20 in all three majors so far. He seems to be playing well around the sort of big times of the season. Have a big chance, I think, this week before the British Open. And at 33, um, at 30 to 1, I think Shane Lowry is some really good value. Selection number four for the Scottish Open is going to be Adam Scott at 55 to 1, a 14 time winner on the PGA Tour. He's a major winner and one of the best swings on tour. Always loved his swing, really good with his long irons as well. And that's going to bode very well for him this week, too. Again, he's been in great form this year. He's only missed the one cut, which is rather extraordinary. Considerably consistent, considerably more consistent than a lot of players that we've seen on tour this year. And even when he missed the cut, that was just by the one shot. And he didn't really put well that week as well. His long game is going to be really well suited to the course this year. He's got some really good long par threes. And using those long irons to get these approaches to these par fours and par fives, I think it's going to be really helpful to his game. He's going to get plenty of opportunities for birdie and eagle this week. Very consistent player, and Adam Scott will take uh, spot number four on this week's squad. Moving on to the PGA Tour, we've got the Barbasol Championship, Keen Trace Golf Club, 7,328 yards, four par fives, par 72, only the six places for the each way of turns. But as I said, I'm going to be playing for the win singles bar the one selection, which I'll point out in a moment. But what I will say, I'm getting slightly bored of these really low scoring events. There, a lot of drivers. Flicking them onto the green and making putts on very not undulating golf course. So I'd like to see some tougher tracks on the PJ Tour getting bored of these 20 unders every single week. But that being said, I do have four selections that I fancy quite strongly for this week. The first selection is going to be Taylor Pendrith at 16 to 1. Now, he is currently the joint favourite for this event, which isn't usually an angle I like to take, but I think he's coming here with a really big chance for the big guns over playing in the Scottish Open. And he's definitely a player that's going places. He's been playing really well on tour this year, and he actually had a really good week at the Rocket Mortgage as well. He's going to be really low scoring week this week as well, and he's number one from 150 yards to 200 yards on the stats, and he's pretty close from 100 yards out as well up there on the stats as well. He's going to win sooner or later. Top 20 here last year, huge chance this week. And even though he's only 16 to 1, I think he's really good value for it out of the lower or the shorter price players this week. So Taylor Pendrith at 16 to 1 is selection number one for the week. Selection number two is going to be Peter Kest at 25 to 1. Now, this is a player that I'm going to tell you to start remembering the name. He's a really young player. And he's only had 11 starts on the PGA Tour so far, but I've been really impressed by his game. He's taken it all in his stride, and definitely these lower score events are going to really suit him very nicely indeed. He was tied fourth at the Rocket Mortgage. He was tied 17th in the John Deere. And he's a very, very good player. Not a lot of previous form to go on, but I've been watching him really closely. A very good swing, easy movement, straight back, straight forward. And he's a very good player. Close to making him my number one selection this week. But with that lack of experience, I'm just going to drop him to selection number two. But I've been really impressed with this lad. And he could get himself a really early win on tour in just his 12 starts. That's Peter Kest at 25 to 1. Now, selection number three is Kelly Kraft at 125 to 1. A really big price. He's the world number 514, so very far down in the rankings. But this is the only player that I'd advise playing each way on their own for the singles in particular. 125 to 1 shot. Being close to making the squad a few times this year. He is a player that I'm very fond of, but he's missed plenty of cuts. But it's not to be too much of a dislike, and he can go really, really low, and he should be able to handle things a little bit better this week. When you've got the likes of Scotty Scheffler, McElroy, Hovland, and all the rest of it, I find Kelly Craft hard to see him competing. But with all of those players over in the Scottish Open at 125 to 1, he does make my squad this week. His putting has often let him down, but generally he's pretty decent with his approach play and if he gets it rolling on these pretty flat greens i think he's going to come here with a really big chance 125 to 1 is huge definitely gets the opportunity into the squad this week with all the big guns overplaying the scottish open and then selection number four is going to be justin lower at 40 to 1 a really good player finished tight eighth in this event last year which isn't usually a sort of trait i like to go on but he played very very well and looks like he's going to be really well suited to this event as well Watched him for some time now. He's a really good form player. So when he gets on a roll, he is hard to stop when he gets on that train. And I think he's going to continue here as well. Really solid with his putter. Solid in this stats as well. Sitting at 12th on strokes gained with the putter. And I think that's a really big requirement this week. I know I said Kelly Craft isn't really one that puts very well. But the other three are very solid. And I'm just giving Kelly Craft that chance this week. But Justin Lower, I think he's really solid. He's been pretty good this year too. And 40 to 1 is massive. I actually thought he'd be half that price this uh, this week. Decent course form very good form coming into this um, event at present as i said that really does bode well when he gets on a roll he does take a while to get off that train so justin lower at 40 to 1 is selection number four 
Just to recap on those selections for this week, we've got in the Scottish Open, Jordan Spieth at 22 to 1, Tommy Fleetwood at 22 to 1, Shane Lowry at 30 to 1, and then Adam Scott at 55 to 1. And then in the Barbasol, we've got Taylor Pendriff at 16 to 1, Peter Kest at 25 to 1, Kelly Craft at 125 to 1, and then Justin Lower at 40 to 1. Now, as usual, these selections have been brought to you in order of strength, and they all advise I advise the win singles and the each way cross doubles, bar Kelly Craft, who should be placed as an each way selection for the single. They're my full selections for both events this week. I do hope you're enjoying the content. I will be back again with some more selections for the British Open. And moving forward, my uh, videos are going to be coming out Monday night or Tuesday morning due to the high demand of them of late. Thanks everyone for tuning in. As mentioned, click subscribe. Drop me a message on Twitter before 9pm on uh, Wednesday evening. You can come over and join in on the group chat. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck with your bets. And of course, drop me a message and let me know who you think is going to be winning this week's event. Bye for now.